Hello, everyone. My name is Firkin, and I'll be talking about worst practices for creating reusable components in QML. I work at Autodesk, and I've been part of a project to replace a UI framework that has been built internally and has been in use for 30 plus years with Qt and QML. And in the three years that I've been working on this project, I learned a thing or two about reusable component design, and I'd like to share some of those with you. But before we get to the examples, let's define what a bad component looks like. A bad component in QML depends on context, which means it might be accessing some ID that it's not supposed to be accessing. It accesses context properties. It relies on information that's not immediately available to it. Second thing is it makes assumptions. So a component might be making assumptions about its parent, might be making assumptions about where it's being used and in what context it's being used. Maybe it just assumes that it's supposed to be positioned at the top right corner, or maybe it just assumes that its container is a list view. So it accesses a attached property for the list view and then does a few things internally, depending on that. Another thing is uses hard-coded logic. This by, by this, I mean, Internally, let's say you have a contact list and a contact list item. When you click on the plus button or an edit button on this contact list item, it internally calls the code to maybe pop up your contact edit view or whatever else that you're doing. Ideally, these would be done outside of it so that things are not mixed internally and the component itself is easy to maintain and easy to also apply to other contexts. And a bad component feels arbitrary. You look at the code, and it doesn't seem like there was any thought behind it. You see code scattered all around the place. Maybe Z indexes are being used left and right for no reason. You see random numbers there. Maybe X and Y properties are being used with just magic numbers. When you put all of these, or even just one of this together, you end up with bad components. So let's get to a bunch of examples. The first example is using arbitrary Z index. So this is I think this is especially an easy mistake to make for beginners because when you're working in a complex complex UI, you are going to have multiple objects in there. And at some point when, especially if you're working on some responsive design, maybe you'll re resize the window and then you'll realize one item overlaps with the other and it shows up behind, but you don't want it to show behind. So you just changes that number, Z order for to whatever that you think is right. In this example, like if you look at the example here, it's just using the number 10, but is there any reason to it? Why, why did they do it that way? It looks arbitrary, we don't know. But when you use something like one, which may indicate that you thought about different layers in your component and you decided that this belongs in the second layer, whereas the other ones in the first layer and the third layer, and maybe have some documentation about this. But the best way of doing it is just relying on the stacking order that's defined in the QML document so that you look at the code and you understand where each of those items go in the stacking order. Another thing is relying on parents. When This is also, I think, related to depending on context and making assumptions because you're assuming that the parent of the parent is going to have a with property and that with property is indeed what you want. And in most cases, this is the kind of the bad thing about QML before Qt6, you are going to get lucky. And if you keep getting lucky, you're going to think that this pattern is what works and then you'll keep doing it. In this case, this list view item is being used inside a list view and the immediate parent of the list view item is actually going to be the internal item of that list view. And the parent of that is going to be list view itself. And in this case, we're using the width and height properties, but in some other cases, maybe somebody is using model.length or maybe even accessing some information from the model, or maybe using the count property of list view to decide you know, if, if he wants to set a certain number to itself or maybe adjusting its index in there. This is a bad pattern because once you put this list view items item into, into a column, it's not going to work because it's not going to have those, that parent is not going to have those properties. Another good example for this, it's related to the other one relying on parent, which not entirely context property technically, but it is depending on the context in which it's used in the list view. And in this case, 
this button button on the right is relying on the fact that it's you being used with this button group and this ID for the button group is group. So if you access it here, it's going to access the count property and it'll work. Again, in this case, you'll get lucky until you move this someplace else or somebody comes in and replaces this group ID with something else that makes more sense for them. And this will stop working. So it's best to ask for these properties from the interface of this control of this control group button rather than relying on some IDs that's defined someplace else. This won't actually work for Qt6. It'll be an error. And if you're using tools like QML Lint and QML Language Server, they will warn you about those things. And I highly recommend that you advantage, take advantage of those tools. Setting positions internally. This is, this is easy to make if you are separating out a part of your code from the QML document into a separate component because you think that it's going to be a lot of code for it and you just leave out the anchors or the X and Y properties in there. And again, the bad thing is you'll get lucky because once you use that component in that context, in, that, in this case, contact list item, it's going, to end up, it's going to end up working. But then once you move this someplace else or if somebody comes in and decides that using a row makes more sense for this, it'll, it's going to stop working. And sometimes this will be easy. Sometimes you'll get an error in the case of row. Arrow, row will say you're using anchors when, when this thing is inside a positioner. So you'll see it, maybe you'll find that immediately. But in other cases, it, it won't be that obvious. And if a beginner is looking into this code, they will look at the most obvious places and sometimes they'll, they'll forget to look into the component itself. So it's best if you want your component to be reusable, just avoid setting anchors internally or X, X and Y properties internally. Not setting sensible defaults. This is, this is a problem that you may not encounter immediately when you're using QML, but once you get into something big, in our case, we have thousands and thousands of lines of QML code, and we have run into cases where we declare a, pro declare a component. It works in most cases, but in this one context, it suddenly stops working. And you look into it, it's hard to find out, but it turned out in our case that we didn't have a sensible default for that one. We, didn't, we weren't setting a proper implicit size for it, and it was looking differently in some other place that we were using it because in the places where it works, we were setting its height explicitly there and it was working. But when you because of the way that Qt Quick Controls is designed, which provide their own sensible defaults for padding, implicit sizes and all, you just declare a type button and then it just works. And since it becomes a habit from that, you expect the same thing from here as well, but it doesn't turn out that way. So it's best to always provide some sensible defaults. Like you should define what should be the default state of your component. Is it, this could be related to its color, its size, or its behavior when animation or anything else. So unless there's some, if there's some customizations and properties are, are, are great tools for it, but if not, provide some implicit sizes, some sensible defaults so that when somebody just declares that type, they can, they can see something on the screen at least. Otherwise, with the implementation on the left, they won't see anything. If they have a text in that label, maybe they'll see the text, but there won't be any background for it. Mixing delegates with components. You will run into this issue if you get into a habit of declaring required properties for your components and those components, excuse me, those properties come from the model that you're using someplace else. This will work in this case because contact model will maybe provide all these properties, but if you want to use it in a different place because maybe you only are showing one contact and not in a list view, this will stop working because contact list item will say, hey, you're not giving me all my required properties. You're missing the photo and the index, but I don't need a photo and the index here. Maybe I just want to show the name, right? But using required properties, because I was expecting from the model, this breaks that behavior. And it binds this component directly into the use of this model and the view that it belongs to. In order to fix that problem, just separate your components from delegates because delegates are specialization of reusable components, whereas reusable components are reusable components. You want to be able to use them in different contexts. But if you want to bind one visual item to a specific location, a specific data type, then you use delegates, which if you look at examples, Qt is already making ample use of this pattern. 
And now with that change, if you declare this component here, it'll work. And maybe internally you changed it so that it you know, removes the photo when there's no photo set for it and it'll work properly. Using top level layout items. This isn't the worst mistake that you can make, but doing this will make it harder for you to compose different UI elements together. In this case, contact, contact list item is using a row as a top level item. And on the right side, I want to put a plus button on top of it. Just by looking at the code, I would expect that plus button would be on the top left corner of this contact list item. But if I run this code, I'll see that plus button shows up right next to contact name. This is because row is a top level and plus button is parented to row, which makes it show up right next to content name. In order to fix this problem, you just make your top level item a non-positioner type or a non-layout type and then put your positioner item inside of that top level item. In this case, when I run this code, plus button will indeed show up on the top left corner as I intend it to be. Or maybe I want to anchor it to some other place. Qt Quick Controls is actually a great example for this where they always separate different levels of a certain component in different layers. In the case of a combo, combo box, its content item, background, and indicator are all in different levels. So if I want to add a rectangle next to the content item, if its current index is zero, maybe I want to have some sort of indicator for it, then I can just add a rectangle, add some left padding to the combo box, and it will look as I intended it. The last pattern, the last mistake, is not establishing proper patterns for your component design. Now, since you're using QML, maybe you're used to using Qt Quick Controls. In that case, I highly recommend that you adopt the pattern from from that library. But if you're not doing it, you're using, maybe you're creating your custom components from scratch, then I highly recommend that you come up with some patterns like could, 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 could controls did, like the content item, backgrounds, indicators, paddings, insets, so that using it, using your components is more intuitive than otherwise it would be. If, when you're using could create controls, whenever you see a content item, you know immediately what it means. It's supposed to show some information about that particular component. In one case, it could be a text field for a combo box or for a button, it could, it could be a label, but we know that in both cases, it's going to be text. Or maybe if you're having your own image viewer item with some buttons around it, then the content item could, for that would be a, a an item that would hold the image so that you know the designer can position that image in whatever position they want and they can scatter those buttons around it. Having these patterns really helped us because it also establishes a common language when you're communicating with other people. When I'm talking to designer, I can easily tell them that the reason that that control is not looking right is because they're not adding a padding around it. Or the reason that it's not working is because they don't have an indicator, or maybe they set it to a wrong item and that it shows up behind it. And this really helps with making things easier to come up with solutions and communicating that solutions to other people as well. And that is all. Thanks so much for listening. If you didn't agree with some of the things that I said here, or if you have some new ideas about this, I'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to contact me.